All right, it looks like I couldn't ignore anymore the hype around signals in Angular. It looks like everyone is talking about that. So in this video, we'll have a look at signals. What is that? How we can use it? How we can benefit from it? And why it is such a big thing in Angular community. Hi everyone, if you are first time on my channel, my name is Dmitro Mzhensky and here you can find a lot of advanced and in-depth Angular tutorials that you can check out later. But now let's get started and learn more about Angular signals. While it is very exciting to learn such a hot and uh, new topics like Angular signals, it is always a good idea to become an expert in topics that we uh, use daily in our job. For instance, Angular Forms. And here I would like to recommend my video course about advanced Angular Forms. And this is one of the most in-depth courses about this topic and this is what you will learn from it. There, besides the basic things uh, like template-driven forms or reactive forms, we will do a lot of source code investigation so you will understand in depth how Angular forms are working and at the end of the course you will be able to build really complex custom form controls like custom drop-down component that supports multi-selection, option searching or accessible navigation through the options and selecting them just by pressing enter on your keyboard. And additionally, you will learn how to create forms dynamically from some JSON config, which appropriate architecture to choose for that and how to optimize it by lazily load dynamic controls. This everything you will learn from the course, links will be in the video description. Before before I show signals in action, let's very quickly talk about the motivation to have such a reactive primitives in Angular Core and here I'm going to highlight just a couple of them. One of the reasons why the research in this area was actually kicked off is that bringing the fine-grained reactivity into Angular Core could unleash the more efficient and more targeted change detection mechanism that doesn't rely on Zone.js library anymore. I'm pretty sure you have a question like, okay, but what's wrong with the Zone.js and change detection right now? And in general, back then it was a great solution. I mean, Zone.js and it could uh, kind of magically for developers detect changes in Angular application state and synchronize or refresh the component views accordingly without any additional work from a developer side. However, the more application grows, the more often Zone.js and change detection becomes a bottleneck in the application performance. And in order to solve those performance issues, developers had to dive deeper and deeper into the process of um, uh, of how change detection works in Angular. Um, developers have to learn things like on push change detection strategy uh, or more advanced concepts like running some asynchronous code outside of Angular zone in order to reduce amount of change detection cycles. Another drawback is that Zone.js cannot tell Angular which exactly component has changed. Instead, it just notifies Angular that, all right, some event happened in the application that might change the state of one or more components in the component tree, but which exactly component we don't know. And because of that, Angular has to uh, perform the change detection cycle for all component tree running from top to bottom and in such a way doing a necessary job. I don't want to go into the details how exactly this process is happening because the change detection is a topic of another video that will be published in two weeks since today. So if you don't want to miss this video, consider subscribe to this channel and turn on all the notification. But now let's continue and um, finally to complete the list of drawbacks of Zone.js. Um, I wanted to mention that Zone.js, it is a third party library that is being used by Angular. It is included into the final bundle. So if we get rid 
uh, of Zone GS, then we can obviously reduce the bundle size of the application. Not too much, but it is always good to have smaller bundle size. So this fine-grained reactivity that comes with this new concept of signals can significantly improve change detection and make it more targeted and perform change detection only for the components where their data model has changed. The next stop is RxJS and RxJS it is extremely powerful library for reactive programming. It is really extremely powerful but when you know what you are doing. Because when you don't know what you are doing with RxJS your code can turn into a mess very quickly and cause you performance issues, maintainability issues and days of headache especially if you mixing up the declarative reactive approach with the imperative one then things become completely unmaintainable race conditions appears here and there and it is uh, really challenging to uh, maintain such a, a code base from another side the concept of signals is way easier to understand and uh, it can take over some tasks that could be done before with RxJS, but signals can do it more efficient and easier way, especially when it comes for synchronous reactivity where signals are particularly good. But it doesn't mean that signals will replace uh, completely RxJS. There are use cases when RxJS is still uh, beneficial and when it comes for a synchronous reactivity there RxJS really shines and you can plug in the RxJS when you actually need it, when you need its power. Otherwise you can go with just signals and don't use RxJS at all. And in my opinion, it is even better for RxJS because usage of this library becomes really uh, more conscious and justified. All right, so let's quickly have a look at how signals look in the real application. Again, it is a, in the development preview mode, but you can already play around with signals if you update your project to at least version 16 next.1 or higher. So now we can start converting some of the class properties into signals. To do that, you have to import a signal function and provide some initial value for it. So now you can see that my property turned into a settable signal of type string. It also means that the way how we read and write a new value to it has also changed and that's why you can uh, see the compilation errors here. To change the value of signals you have several options. The most straightforward one is to use a set method and just provide a new value for it. It will change the value of the signal and all consumers of this uh, signal will be notified about this new value. But how to start to consume values from signal? To read the signal value you have to uh, call it as a function like that. And as you can see all the errors are gone. Oh yes, it looks like I forgot to update also template and I have to start reading the signal value here as well. So cool, the, the problem was solved and yeah, obviously the same thing we can do also for the array of users and let's convert it to the signal as well. Again, because the way we read value from the signal is different, uh, we have to adjust it in our code as well. So let's do that. Here we go. And when it comes to updating signals, uh, sometimes you may encounter a situation when the new signal value has to be recalculated based on the previous signal value. So in order to perform such kind of update, there are two methods like mutate and update. For instance, if you use the update method, you have to provide a callback that takes a current signal value, or it's better to say it was previous signal value, and based on that value, you can 
like in my case, generate a new array, spread the uh, old one and add a new item to this array. And in such a way, you keep your data immutable, which might be very useful uh, when uh, your application uh, required to work with immutable data because you use, I don't know, something like NGRX or some uh, other libraries that require immutable data. But you can also just mutate the currently existing array and for that you can use the mutate um, method and uh, in the callback in this case you get the reference to the user's array that can be modified by using the push method and there you can push a new item for this array. From the performance point of view, for signals it doesn't matter actually either you mutate the state or update so you can choose uh, both of them but let me uh, quickly revert back to the update method for now. However, if we save this change and try to add a new user it will not work. What is interesting though is that it will work if we use a mutate method because we would mutate the existing array which the filtered user's property refers to. But since we use update method, we change the reference to the new array and this change will not be picked up by Angular and we would need to reassign the new array from the user signals and only then we will see the, the new user added. But wouldn't it be cool if we could somehow track all the signal changes and recalculate those filtered users property each time when either the uh, search or users signal is changing. And there is a dedicated function for it, which is called computed, and you can import it from the Angular core. This function takes a simple function where you can execute basically any logic. For example, I can take this uh, filtering logic and paste it here inside. What is actually cool about this function is that this callback, this logic will be recalculated or re-executed each time when one of these signals inside that computed function is changing. So it will derive always the actual state based on the signals that are needed to be computed. So since the computed function returns a signal, we have to also adjust it here in the template and start reading the value from, from the signal like that. Okay, uh, what's wrong is here. Ah, yeah, I forgot to remove uh, this part, which is not needed anymore. So, awesome. Now, whenever I change the user state, or if I try to change the value of the search signal, the value of the filtered users will be always kind of in sync. All right, I hope it's pretty much clear. And now let's move forward. Another use case, you might encounter working with uh, signals is to perform some side effects when the value of uh, any signal is changing. For example, imagine I want to record the last value of a search signal in the local storage and use it as an initial value for the signal if the user suddenly reloads the page. For that you can use a special function called effect and uh, also this function takes a callback and uh, inside this callback you can define the logic that you actually need and in my case uh, I want to add a new item uh, into the local storage and its value has to be the current value of the search signal, so something like that. And now whenever one of the signals inside this callback function changes, the effect function will be re-executed and the value of the search signal will end up in the local storage. So now let's try to maybe change the value of the search signal by typing a new value into the input and you can see that it is being saved inside the uh, local storage. 
And if I want to have this value saved in the local storage as an initial value for the signal, I will just read from the local storage like that. And now if I reload the page, you can see that uh, the page from, from the local storage was uh, taken and all the changes in my signals, uh, they are being reactively uh, like tracked, recomputed and everything works great. You might also ask, uh, what about RxGS? You mentioned that it's kind of uh, kind of work together. Well, the thing is that currently this API isn't ready, but there will be some, uh, so to say, helper functions that will allow you to convert signals into observables and vice versa. So there will be something like function, I don't know, from observable, obviously the name can change uh, when this API become stable. Uh, but the idea is that this function takes a signal and returns the RxJS observable, so you can apply then pipe operators to it and uh, write other RxJS code. Or you can convert some observable into a signal and uh, use the signal to deliver values emitted by that observable into a component template. And in this case, you don't have to care about a sync pipe and you can benefit from from the more performant change detection algorithm based on signals. All right, so this is how signals look in Angular. And now let's very quickly recap uh, what consequences might have the full adoption of signals in Angular framework. Firstly, we'll get a more performant change detection mechanism that doesn't rely on ng zone library and it will become more performant and more targeted so it will have a positive impact on the uh, Angular application performance. RxJS will become optional, which makes Angular friendlier for newcomers and it will be easier to get started with it. At the same time, currently existing code base written with RxJS remains compatible with this new concept of signals because you can easily convert them into each other. And uh, how I see uh, in the future, you will be handling most of the cases where you need reactivity using signals, but when you really need the power of RxJS, you can just bring it into your project and start using that without any problem. Besides that, signals will simplify and improve other concepts in Angular framework that I didn't mention in this video. For instance, lifecycle hooks, some of them will become uh, obsolete when signals will be fully adopted. For instance, ng on changes, maybe some others, or there is a chance that we will hopefully forget or at least see less the error like value has been changed after view checked. I'm pretty sure every one of you have uh, encountered this error before. But yeah, let's see what the future will bring to us and uh, let's see how the uh, full adoption of signals will uh, impact the Angular framework. But I think it's a big thing in the Angular community and I'm very excited uh, how this everything will work out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it, please share it with your colleagues and friends. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the uh, comment section because I would like to hear your opinion. What do you think about signal concept in Angular? Do you see it as a step forward or for the reason you see it as a step back? So let's discuss it. Otherwise, I wish you productive week ahead, stay safe and see you in the next video where we are going to talk about change detection in Angular.